all of you coming out today, this wonderful day in the city of Inglewood. I believe that you are seeing a new beginning. By the way, have you had the opportunity to read our District 1 newsletter? If you did not receive it, please leave us your email address and we and you will receive the next month. What about the start of this construction on Century Boulevard? Now I know you're excited about that as I am. We have waited a long time, but it's on the way. And let's not forget the construction on the streets, sidewalks, and curbs. I know you've noticed city workers doing their work, improving our streets, and doing our sidewalks. This is something that we've waited for as well, and now it's coming to pass. I hope you noticed the, the demolition and construction at Hollywood Park. You will hear more about that as we go along. You will hear a lot more from other speakers here that we've invited for you today. I really hope that you had the privilege to attend or watch the state of the city. This was a premier event here in Inglewood. If you did not see it, or if you did not hear it, believe me, this is something that you should have seen. I don't know if we will be able to, okay, if, if you wanna see it, go on the city website and take a look. It is really something to see. We are blessed to have chosen a leader with such vision and tenacity. He is the one person who I know and I believe can lead this city to where it needs to be and where it is now going. When I say he's the hardest working man in this city, I got proof. This man's at six o'clock or five o'clock, I can't get my phone off, this morning, sent me two emails. It's like homework to him. He sends us things to read. I mean, there's something in here about, uh, I, I can't, I don't wanna take up your time, but it's something about uh, people who are, yeah, peaks the obligations for different cities. And some of them are going bankrupt. Some are trying to figure a way how to come out of that. But guess what? Inglewood leader took care of us when he first got into office. So I don't want to take up too much time because we've got a long agenda, but I want you to please help me bring our leader, our mayor, to this microphone, please. Good morning, everybody. You know, I, I, I don't wanna redo the, the, the um, state of the city address, but how many of you have seen it online or had the opportunity to go? Okay, so for the rest of you, if you have access to an email account, if you, if you sign in over there, we'll make sure that not only do we send you the link to it so you can see it in its entirety, but also so that you can receive all the council's newsletters and you'll know exactly what's going on citywide. You know, I don't wanna preempt a lot of these great speakers. We have some great speakers who are gonna tell you about great things in the city. I'm just gonna break things down holistically. Over the last four years, a lot of good things have happened. First of all, our police department, even though they're shorter staffed than they were even when I was a, a, an officer in this police department, 
have produced the last five lowest consecutive years of crime on record in the history of the city of Inglewood. Give the police department, Chief Ron Arad, a big hand. When I came into office, we had lost eligibility for our sound insulation grants, okay? Uh, in 2010, we insulated only 70 homes. We went from doing as many as 400 homes along the way to down to 70, and we had lost access to about 40 million in, in, in uh, grant funds. Over the last three years, between the FAA and LAWA, we've had access to $100 million in sound insulation funds. We have insulated over 2,000 homes in the last 24 months, and we are on track now to, do, to finish every resident that wants insulation that is eligible in the city, including those at the end of the block. And I want to give uh, David Esparza and Betty Griffith a big hand for all the work that they've done. We've, uh, I, I send the uh, council people and staff emails, and it was three in the morning, it's yours. But I send them, I, I read voraciously about the failures of other cities so that we can prevent them here ourselves. And we've done some really um, tough things in the way of, of eliminating uh, unfunded liabilities in our, in, our, in our employee health plans and other things. And so we've come to the point now where we've taken our, our last $11 million, we've grown that to $34 million. We'll spend about 7 or $8 million to buy off that underfunded li uh, liability of about $199 million that we owe to the employees for health care. So we've done some smart things, tough things, and our employees have been there with us every step of the way. Um, infrastructure. We were really poor in renewing our roads, trimming our trees, taking care of our water system. We've uh, contracted out for tree trimming. Before, we had three employees, and we could do about 1,200 trees a year on an average. We have about 19,000 trees in our city inventory. That meant if you had a tree, you'd be lucky to get it done once every 20 years. We've contracted out at a savings of $500,000 a year, and now we can do 6,000 trees a year and now we can do it, if necessary, a tree almost every three years. So that's a big difference. We're doing things just smarter. We're spending your money for you to, to give you your services. All I ever heard about was Century Boulevard. <laughs> so I've been in office. My goodness. Well, Lewis is going to tell you that I think we've gone out to bid. I think we've gone out to bid either this week or next week for the work, and we should start, start construction no later than September. Um, the forum opened, you know that. Uh, a lot of people complained about the uh, last redevelopment subsidy that we gave the Madison Square Garden to spend 50 million to renovate the forum. They spent 23 million to purchase it. Well, instead of spending 50 million, they spent 100 million to renovate it. And in less than 11 months, it was the number one concert venue in the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, we were named by Curbed LA. It's an internet magazine about real estate the number one neighborhood in LA for 2014. Um, That's just so much stuff. We've been covered by the Los Angeles Business Journal, by the Planning Report. These are nationwide business publications about the things that we have done here in the city of Inglewood. Uh, we couldn't do this. The council could not do this. Also, uh, Councilman Padilla is here. I'm sure he was going to be introduced. Would you give a hand to Councilman Padilla? The, you know, you know it's, it's one thing to have vision, but you have to have people that buy in and work cooperatively. And this is the most cooperative, synergistic council that I've ever seen in my history with the city of Inglewood. I started working here in 1972, and I've never had the pleasure of working with such um, hardworking, uh, cooperative, people-oriented. See, they're, they're oriented towards you and what your services should be. And so... I'm not going to take any more time. I just want to tell you, we're taking care of the big things, and we're paying attention to details. And we're just fortunate to have the staff that we do. I'm fortunate to have the council members that work with me that, that, that we do. But most importantly, we're so fortunate to have the support of all of you. And to come out here on a Saturday to hear what's going on says a lot to me. It says people are engaged and people care. So I want to thank you again for all the support you've given me and, and, and reelecting me, uh, the, the uh, it, it said a lot to me um, 
in the last election that people are happy with the way things are going. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know what? Now we're going to get to this program. <laughs> Please forgive me, but I know the Mayor had other stops. He's really busy. This is just the first one. And it's probably not his first one today. Okay, um, let's go with the the agenda. Just that it is it is print, printed. Um, we'll have Charles Braggs give us the pledge of allegiance. Uh, Charles, would you come forward? Charles is our uh, park and rhetoric. No, it's our parking and tra traffic commissioner. He's now got on his surf gear. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise, put your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty for all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now uh, we'll have the invocation. Dr. Mildred Butler. Good morning to all. In the words of the ancient prophet, come now and let us reason together. This is the tent of the meeting. You have come so we can reason together. Let us pray. God of life and hope in this place and at this appointed time, we are all drawn together to share a common lot, moving beyond ourselves to serve the wider community. In these times of questionable economic credibility, fragile global markets, civil unrest, and far too many families and individuals worried about childcare and health concerns, we as the citizens are called upon to do good, show mercy, and practice kindness. Gracious God, from the dust of the ground, you breathe life into us. You created us in your image and in your likeness, and for this we say thank you. While some of our neighbors are marginalized, fragmented, and forgotten, we as the citizens strive to live out our and your ordained purpose for us as civic and religious leaders. Help us, O oh God, to stand still so we can clearly focus on important work. Summon us to learn new ways to engage us to do things better. Open our hearts and minds so that we may become a vibrant community of citizens who values all people equally. In your mighty name, we offer this prayer and let God's people say, Amen. Now, I, I'm going to deviate from this a little bit because I, uh, I found out, and I guess I should have known this um, some time ago, we have a National Police uh, Week. I did not know that. And I want to thank our men and women in blue that serve us here in Inglewood. This is to me one of the best departments in the state, maybe in the nation. And so guys who are here, I want to thank you for your, your service and your protection. I understand what you go through since I have a son in the service. So uh, please believe me, we stand behind you. And I know you stand in front of us. So thank you for your service. All right. Um, we're going to have uh, the star of our public works come up here. Now you guys take it easy on this guy. He's, he's done a lot of stuff for first district. He, he, he's my favorite person. Alex left, so we, we can say that now. Oh, no, he hadn't back there. 
Uh, Lewis Adwell, please. Thank you, Councilman. Both districts are my favorite. Is the mayor still here? I'm kidding. Thank you for having me today. Uh, I brought my assistant. You don't have to press the button yet. I'll let you know, baby. My, my daughter, Ella, her birthday's tomorrow. Yeah. She'll be nine years old. Stay young. No teenage years. So I'm sure everybody's seen quite a bit of work in the city over the past couple of years. Uh, we still have quite a bit to go. Um, there are many things that didn't happen in the city for many, many years, especially in District 1. And we realize it. The mayor realizes it. Councilman Padilla, District 2, realizes it. And he's very understanding as well. So last year, we paved more streets than we've ever paved in uh, District 1. But I'll, I'll get to those streets in a minute. So the, a little bit about the Public Works Department. Everybody knows what the police does, uh, but a few people know what Public Works does. We do more than just streets, and we're made up of quite a few divisions. Uh, administration Division, which is the division I reside in. We have Engineering, Environmental Services, Fleet Services, General Services, GIS, which is Mapping, Public Services, the Water Streets and Sewer, Transportation Engineering, and Utilities. And by the way, I do have somebody here. I don't have many people in uniform, but Sung Yang is uh, here. He's uh, my associate engineer, and he's in charge of permitting. So thank you, Sung, for coming out. Next, Stella. And these are our core services that relate to these divisions. Uh, we design, construct, and maintain and inspect the city's infrastructure from sidewalk to sidewalk. We maintain city buildings and the assessment districts. We issue permits for stormwater quality improvements, public right-of-way construction, and special events. So the block parties all come through public works. So please remember that. No, I'm kidding. And we also manage the solid waste contract, and we maintain, repair, and procure the city's vehicles. And that includes police vehicles, and that's why they're nice to me. Next up. Oh, sorry. I'll speak up. So this year, as the mayor explained, uh, we do have a couple new services. One that he mentioned was tree trimming. And so the tree trimming contract, uh, as the mayor was explaining, we now trim 6,000 trees per year. Uh, we did retain our city workers, and they continue to trim trees. But now we have a contract that assists us in trimming all the trees. So before, we would trim a tree maybe every 10 to 15 years. Now we try to get to them every three years. Uh, street sweeping, that's a new service. I don't know if you've noticed recently, but your streets should be cleaner. Uh, the street sweeping vehicles that we had were on their last, I would say leg, but they have wheels. Uh, they were on their last wheels. They were pushing material from one district to another. So. Councilman Dotson was nice to me, so we tried to push it into another district, and it didn't quite work that way. But no, we, we changed out our street sweeping, and now we have a new contractor. These, these folks work for me in another city, and they do a fantastic job. They were, uh, they were in an RFP process, and they beat out four other street sweeping companies, and they saved the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. And not only that, the folks that drove the street sweepers for the city now work in the streets division, so we can do more streets ourselves. And uh, we didn't let anybody go to do that. So, so those are two, two new uh, uh, services that we provide with outside vendors. And their phone number is on the screen. If you have a pen and paper, if you have a complaint, you can call them directly. And they're very, very proactive and reactive as opposed to uh, what we were doing before. Because we would just go out there and move it around again, if you call this. Um, next up. Some of the projects that we did last year, which was only six months ago. Go ahead. 
The Streets and Alleys project, as I was saying and the mayor was uh, mentioning, we did nine miles of street improvements last year in District 1 alone. We would only do two miles in the whole city the past few years. We did 15 miles in total last year. And so we're, we're doing a lot more, thank you, than, than we've ever done. And I tell the council and the mayor, if you give me my, my department, not me, because I can go to jail for that. If you give my department <laughs> the money, we will spend it and we will do a good job. So we did nine miles of streets. As you can see, there's three of them right there. Uh, 79th, 81st, 82nd, 82nd, 83rd, 84th, 85th. Go ahead, Ella. Just keep your finger on there. And then 4th, 3rd, 2nd, and so on. So we did quite a few streets. Go ahead, Ella. So these are what the streets looked like before. And before. And then after. They look beautiful. And, and I have a, a firm saying that streets add to both the quality of life and also to what your home is worth because it is the frame around your home. Next. So these are projects currently under construction. And now I got to catch up. Go ahead, Ella. So Florence Avenue, please avoid Florence Avenue for now if you can. It's an artery and there's a cemetery that you can't cut through and it's hard to cut through the north part, but we're redoing that entire street from La Brea to West. And I'll be honest with you, Metro told us, can you wait for us? And I said, no, we're not waiting for anybody. Because what happens if they're delayed? Then we're delayed. So we're doing it, and they're working around us. We're also, we did coordinate with them, though, and they said, well, we're going to be cutting this pavement. We're going to be doing this. And so we're not doing certain things so they can do them for us. And so because nobody wants to see government put something in and then government take it out and redo it. So that's what we're doing. So we did coordinate with them quite a bit. Uh, it's a $3.3 million project. It had been on the, uh, uh, on the wait list for a while, a lot because a lot was done, wasn't getting done before the mayor. And I can say even before I showed up. So we're pushing projects through. And this is one of them. Next slide. Uh, the sidewalk replacement project, uh, we're working on that. We should be in. Um, District 1's area in July. Uh, it's taken a little bit longer than, than normally, but uh, just because I have, like the police department, we have 20%, 25% less staff than we did before when people weren't doing anything, and now we're doing more than we've ever done with about 20% less staff. So that includes what Sung is doing and many of my other engineers and also field personnel. It's a whole new world now. We are earning our money. Next, Ella. And then, of course, the Streets and Alleys project is back in District 1. We did do nine miles last year. Uh, we're doing less this year. What I've tried to do was break the city into two parts, one the west side, one the east side, so a contractor will give us better prices if they can focus in a certain area of the city. And so um, we are doing more than we're doing on the in some other areas on the east side of the city because again district one has been neglected for many many years and so these are the streets that we're doing and we can thank the council they put in one million dollars as they did last year of general fund money that is unheard of so councilman Dotson and, and councilman Padilla thank you very much for that and uh, I won't lobby for another million but I hope we get it <laughs> for next year because we got to play catch up. Um, if the, no, the mayor didn't mention the, the, the football team, and I know Gerard's going to talk about it, but we're a world renowned city, and our streets need to look like it. Next, Ella. And Van Ness resurfacing project, that's, that's a project that uh, has been around for a while as well. And we're looking at um, constructing, starting construction this year. The county will be doing it. However, we did give the county money to do it. And the county's a little slower than us. But they're finally getting to the point where they're going to start that project. 
Next, Ella. And then the, the project that's taken a century to do Century Boulevard. Maybe we should have changed the name of the street. I don't know. Because that project has been on the books for too many years. And it's T triple O because I don't know. When I came here, it, it we got it, we had to do this project. We're gonna start construction this year, September. Um, we're currently advertising for bids starting next week. And so um, we're gonna we're gonna build this thing. And uh, the design plans are done. And the money, the DOF has given us the money. Well, we've always had the money. The problem was the DOF needed to work some things out with the city. They've worked all those things out. And the money is available in late July. And so we're starting in September. And I think that concludes my presentation. We, we want to bring up uh, our man in blue, our lead man in blue, Chief Fadarata. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to announce a few of my staff members that are here with me today. I have Captain David Salcedo over here. I have Lu Lieutenant Neil Cochran over here at the computer. I have Sergeant Reginald Blaylock back here in the corner. Sergeant Cardell Hurt back in the corner there. Officer Anthony Brissinger in the back there. And I, and I know you all know uh, Miss Patrick, Patricia Patrick. So she's, uh, she's wonderful and she helps us out a lot back there. Uh, I just wanted to touch upon a little bit what the public works director was talking about. Um, in terms of, and the mayor and the council uh, members have also spoken about the symmetry and symbiosis that's going on in the city and at the government le level. Uh, working with uh, Mr. Atwell in the Public Works uh, Department, we have a close working relationship, and that's really critical to us because we have to get our fleet out and uh, do a number of other things that he does in our world, in the police world, and he's done an incredible job. So I just want to give him some kudos. I know he had to leave with his daughter, but he has done some uh, fantastic work for us and really assisted us in what we needed in terms of uh, equipment. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention before I got into some of this, the nuts and bolts of this stuff, was that the councilman also mentioned, uh, yesterday was in fact, was uh, the National uh, Peace Officers Memorial Day. Uh, it, it's a national event um, to honor those that have sacrificed in the line of duty across this country. Um, and it's a National Police Week. So, you know, keep your thoughts and prayers uh, for those folks and loved ones who have lost loved ones uh, in the line of duty <clears throat> and that uh, you know and it, it, it's a difficult time in law enforcement nationally today um, but this still is a um, honorable prof profession and noble and so we uh, strive to bring you the best services that we can we do make mistakes and we acknowledge those and we try to correct them as we go since I've uh, taken over the police department those who you were, were there at the first meeting that I had, it was at the, um, I believe it was the mayor's town hall meeting uh, up at the uh, north end of the city. But I spoke about uh, the primary mission and goals of the Inglewood Police Department, to reduce crime and the fear of crime. That is our primary mission. And to do that uh, in a compassionate way, to do it with dignity and respect for everyone. And again, we have made great strides in that uh, area. I have embarked on many programs within the four walls of the organization to culturally change this organization. And I hope that you've seen some of those things uh, starting to bear fruit. And I expect that to continue. And we will be the most professional police department in this country on my watch. And I assure you of that. Again, these things won't happen overnight. Not everybody's perfect. Uh, it takes money. Right. Councilman. <laughs> I think there's another councilman in here. Uh, but in their wisdom, we have done some internal infrastructure rebuilding in terms of our uh, 
we, we call it uh, implementation of our CAD RMS, which is really at the heart of the technological part of the department. That CAD stands for a Computer Automated Dispatch Center, and RMS is our Report Management System. These are the backbone of the uh, technological aspects of our, our uh, department. Where they come into connection with the troops and where the rubber meets the road and that officer that you call upon and knocks on your door uh, when in need um, is to get them that information right into their police vehicles on what we call in the future. We're not there yet. We're about three, four months away. We're, we're in the process of uh, implementing this. And they're building it as we speak. And it, it's about a six to eight month pro uh, project for the process for the CAD component. And it's another eight to nine month process for the RMS. But you can't do both at once. You've got to do it in a, a two tier system. I have been uh, involved with our community or part of this community for 33 plus years. I consider this my home. Um, I know many of you. I know many of you in this room. Uh, we have a good relationship. And I'm all, my door is always open uh, for discussion when there's problems or what have you. Many of you reach out to me through either through my lead officers or uh, through the officers or directly into my office. and we. Always make an effort to respond to those uh, issues that you may have. Um, recently, I was excited to work with, um, I submitted a grant with uh, CalGRIP, which is uh, essentially stands for um, California Gang Reduction Intervention and Prevention Grants uh, in conjunction with the South Bay WIB. We were granted this uh, grant to the tune of $1.5 million with a matching fund of 1.5. So for $3 million, over the next three years, we're going to target 600 youth in the city, at-risk youth, and try to re dissuade them from becoming involved in gangs, uh, drugs, a crime, or things of that nature. It's a collaborative effort countywide. I chair this uh, committee. We had our first meeting uh, the other day. Captain Salcedo was there, uh, Sergeant Blaylock was there. And, you know, we're, it's very promising. My motto is we pay attention to our youth, we invest in them, we dissuade them from becoming involved in crime, gangs, and those sort of things. And uh, we've had a very good uh, return rate on our investment when we make this kind of a, an investment. Uh, not just the money, but the people, the referrals, the interaction, and these are um, front-end referrals that we'll be making to some of the other referral programs in the county. Uh, when we come upon someone's house, we notice some issues with family members, or uh, my sinuses are kicking up pretty bad this morning, um, with family members, or uh, you know uh, what we call tier one youth, you know where there's um, truancy or underage drinking and things of that nature, and. The, we intercede at, a, at, a, at an early stage. And again, our target is 600 youth over the span of three years from ages 11 to 17. Uh, we will track these individuals that we have contact with. And um, my hope and expectation is that the majority of them, we will keep them on the right path. And I think that's always a good day when we keep, keep uh, our young ones uh, out of trouble and give them that guidance. So look for more on that. Won't hear a lot, but it's just it's the end result that matters, and the fact that we care. We build it on a uh, community that cares model, which has been successful nationally, and I have high hopes for this program. So when I get back with you as time goes on, we'll, we'll talk about that. So we're going to talk a little bit about crime. I always say this before I put up many crime stats: that uh, one crime is one too many. And certainly to the loved ones out there who have been victimized by violence uh, and so forth, it's really um, tough because, you know, and crime stats go up and down, and we, we, we always try, strive to lower that crime rate, and we're doing some wonderful things here. Crime, for the last five years, violent crime has been down consistently. Um, that is remarkable, and that is a tribute to the men and women of the department but also the citizens in this community because we have such a strong relationship through our Neighborhood Watch programs that you are our eyes and ears out there, and we really do appreciate that. 
you can call us anonymously many of you do and then we we you know we re, uh, respond to those calls and deal with those issues additionally when i took over and a lot of these things took time because we you know when the mayor was elected and the councilman was elected uh, when i was appointed um, wasn't a lot of money and we were severely understaffed and i think the public works director talked about that but the men and women again did some extraordinary things and as time marched on, I was able to scrape together enough funds to put up a, a, web, a website, which is called crimemapping.com. That enables you to go in and query that, and you can, there's ways and parameters in there that you can work within your district and see what's going on and all that sort of thing. I thought this was important to do so that we could, one, be transparent about what's going on around here, and also so you have situational awareness about also what's going on out there. I talk about situational awareness, it's very, very important because all of us have to have situational awareness, including, including myself. So if you pull into a 7-Eleven to get a cup of coffee or something and things don't look right, then don't go in. Maybe you go, go somewhere else or you call us and we'll go check it out. Or you, know, or you have a suspicious person in your neighborhood, you wanna call us, we're more than happy to come out and contact that individual and see who and what they are and what's going on. Again, that's that relationship that we have strong relationship we have with the community and it's been very very successful for many years so this is just another component of that <clears throat> save that up for a minute uh i'll get to that in a minute i always like to end my uh speech is is that we're always hiring i see we also have a recruitment poster over here as well uh so that's always uh important to me but i just wanted to say that uh again you know, the men and women of this department are dedicated, hardworking, and have done some incredible things and showed a lot of compassion. You know, we don't, we don't talk about that enough uh, in our ranks, and, you know, I wish we would, we would do more of that. But I can assure you that the men and women do some incredible things out there, and I see it on a daily basis. Uh, so lastly, join the team. So anybody who has loved ones, um, friends, relative neighbors who are interested in becoming a part of our team, the Inglewood Police Department, whether it is as a police officer or a dispatcher or a records clerk or what have you, custody officer, uh, the information is up there. It's on our website. All you have to go to is inglewoodpd.org and you can uh, fill out applications and things of that nature. So do pass the word on uh, and we'd love to have you. Mr. McCallum. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you again. Um, uh, you know, uh, Councilman Dotson's asked me just to kind of give you an update. Uh, a lot of this information was presented in the uh, State of the City address. It's really just in the kind of an update on really what are the considerations going into the stadium design. And I'll go through this, and I will afterwards, you know, in the back, answer any additional questions you have, but we'll move through this so we can get through the meeting. Um, uh, you know, one of the considerations that all the time with Hollywood Park, we have always used basically the um, top rated architects throughout the country. Uh, and in this case, the stadium design is being designed by a company called HKS. And HKS actually is the preferred architect uh, for the NFL. Um, they've completed pretty much most of the state-of-the-art uh, NFL stadiums, uh, including Lucas Oil Stadium, AT&T Stadium, that's the one you pretty much see on most of the commercials these days. Viking Stadium is about to open in 2016, and then of course the Inglewood Stadium, we're projecting a 2018 opening. Uh, but they've done uh, a lot of recognizable work throughout the world. Uh, if you remember a few years ago when we had the um, uh, Olympics, uh, uh, they did the bird's nest uh, in, in China. So a lot of that kind of really iconic uh, architecture is what they do, and that's what we're actually bringing to uh, the Inglewood Stadium as well. Um, we are also designing this in, so that it kind of fits into the Southern California region, that it's just not something that just is out of nowhere, but it actually fits into uh, the, 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 the Southern California region. Uh, we are designing an entertainment district. It's not just a stadium, but it's an entertainment sports and entertainment district, and that's how we were referring to it. Um, we are looking at, like, this is the Hollywood Bowl, uh, and as many of you know, the stadium is going to be uh, 
embedded into um, uh, the landscape here, about 100 feet down into the ground, so that it's not a big hunking be building over the top, but similar to a lot of the uh, structures throughout uh, Southern California in which they're embedded into uh, the landscape. A global stage, as Hollywood Park has always been from the 30s on, it will continue to be a global stage. And so we recognize that this is Los Angeles. It's the entertainment capital of the world. And so, therefore, we have to design and be uh, cognizant of that. And so the idea of red carpet events, uh, award shows or whatever, is something that we are also uh, designing towards. Um, layering, this is really sort of kind of uh, the idea of, of multiple uh, structures and multiple layering kind of gives some of the um, uh, um, uh, architectural things that are very unique to Southern California. We're doing that in the stadium as well. Of course, the regional character of uh, uh, Southern California, particularly here uh, towards the beach cities, is the, the coastline, that uh, uh, the waves and the coastline are just kind of what's known here in Southern California. So all that's kind of part and parcel into the design that you'll see um, uh, you know, um, shortly. Sustainable, everything now is geared towards a sustainable environment, reclaimed water, uh, 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 reserving water uh, and electrical and, and all of our uh, resources. It's all being designed into uh, the stadium. Uh, again, here in Inglewood, the weather cannot be any better than anywhere else. The indoor-outdoor feeling of being able to use that uh, will be also part of the things that's being considered into the design. Um, and then, so what are we looking at here? A stadium in which we can house two NFL teams. That's a requirement by the NFL that all new stadiums built um, past 2008 all actually can accommodate uh, two NFL teams. Capacity up to 80,000 seats, flexible seating, so we can do anything from a high school football game to, to a Pac-10, so it's got some flexibility other than just being strictly for football only. Um, and then um, uh, the 6,000 seat uh, performance art venue, and that's basically to complete that sports and entertainment district. Now that you have the forum at the larger size, this is a much smaller venue for sm smaller acts that uh, won't be able to fit into an 18,000 or a, um, a 9,000 seat uh, uh, facility, but can go down to like 1,500. Uh, that'll be as a supplement to the, the region. Next slide. Um, everybody knows the site. You can't miss the site even when you come into to Los Angeles. In fact, now we get the comments, you know, it used to be uh, folks coming in, sitting in the plane, knew when they got to the green patch of land that they were about to, to land. And so now they get to the land and it's all dirt. And it's like, what's happened? What's kind of going on? Um, but it, it, it really speaks of, it's a 300, it's just shy of 300 acres. 298 acres. This is a huge piece of property, and you're starting to see more of it now that the buildings are coming down. You know, you just before just kind of saw a parking lot, a big grandstand, and that was sort of what you could see from the streets. But there was the uh, the track itself, the infield, the practice track, and 1,700 barns uh, that kept going all the way back up into the uh, 10th and 11th Avenue properties, and so. Uh, and, and as many of you know that have been residents for a, a long time, that property used to be even bigger than that. It used to actually incorporate where the Target Center is now and uh, also where the Renaissance Center. It used to be a very large piece of property, and it still is. Uh, we like to say, and we've got all these di diagrams of what cities can fit inside of this pro uh, piece of property, uh, and our, our most famous one is Vatican City can sit twice in times of this property. It's that large. And it gives us basically a blank canvas to be able to actually coordinate uh, districts as opposed to others where you have to sort of like, you put a stadium here, you put a, a hotel here, and it kind of has a little bit of a disjointed feel to it. This actually will coordinate into several districts. Um, and then I'll go over the districts a little later. The landscaping, um, go back one. The landscaping is uh, something in which we are designing it towards the Southern California um, uh, landscape uh, um, mediums and so here in Southern California you can just about drive 30 40 minutes anywhere and you can get into a different types of of landscaping environment anything from the desert to chaparral to riparians to mountainous districts so whether you go to Lake Arrowhead or you go out to the desert regions or whatever you get all of that within a uh, 20 30 minute drive you know non-traffic day 
Um, you'll get you'll, you'll get there. And so we're going to co co incorporate that into the landscaping of the stadium. And so that, again, it feels like Southern California, not something kind of foreign. And so we'll have various regions throughout the uh, uh, the park system and the, the uh, stadium landscape district that will reflect that. Next slide. Um, as we talked about earlier, and I have some other slides later that shows the stadium is really kind of recessed in the ground quite a bit, 100 feet. Um, but it also shows where we're going to be adding these different types of landscaping uh, um, environments. Uh, we actually call them biomes around the stadium and so that it actually the greens up the stadium and so it just doesn't look just like a building, even though this will be actually a very iconic structure. Uh, again, the idea behind the I mean, we heard loud and clear, you know, building these stadiums and they just sit as parking lots empty uh, was something that uh, uh, we heard loud and clear about. And so the idea is to really be able to have it, you know, uh, uh, used all around for just various types of events and so that it would be actually very flexible. Um, these are the districts we were talking about in terms of the design. There's that, that uh, what we call the tricentric in the middle, this sort of central park system that we're dividing in, into the, the property itself that connects one park to the next park to the next park. And so that creates a cohesion in which those are public parks in which you can walk through from one area to the next. And then you would experience the different districts, whether it's the sports and entertainment district up at the, the top closer to the forum, residential in the back that mirrors the existing residential 10th and 11th Avenue um, um, Renaissance properties, or the retail districts uh, down towards Century Boulevard. And then also towards uh, Prairie will be more of our office uh, grade district. Uh, these are some sh um, renderings that you've seen in the papers, you've seen in some of the other pres uh, presentations we've done before that really just shows this is actually coming off the office district, looking into the stadium over the t upper part, uh, upper portion of the lake. Next slide. This is actually looking over the public park, looking into uh, the interior of, this, of the stadium. And the stadium is an open air stadium with a basically a canopy, a roof over the top. Uh, we have this plaza in the middle that'll be open to the public for different types of events, whether it's a farmer's market or jazz in the summer. Th that's the idea behind keeping that environment open. It reminds us a lot, a lot of the design cues were taken from, if you go to the Getty Museum or LACMA Museum for Friday night jazz and you sit under the, the canopies or whatever. Again, using that indoor outdoor aspect of this building. And this is really kind of, you know, post game days. It's, it's, games only happen about 20 days a year. This is really kind of as the community kind of, like currently now, a lot of people walk around the forum or whatever. Um, you can go have a picnic and just kind of sit into the public park space and utilize this as well. Exterior next page. Uh, design cues. Again, that structure, we're using some uh, uh, you know, structural creativity here uh, to be able to really mirror into the Southern California iconic architectural buildings. And so whether it's the mid-century modern from the uh, iconic uh, building at the airport uh, to the Disney Hall to the brand new Moat, uh, uh, Broad Museum, those are a lot of the design cues we're going to incorporate into the stadium itself. Um, and so this exterior design, I just kind of want to show you some of these si uh, slides because uh, we are far behind, beyond six beautiful slides that you see kind of in the paper. <laughs> um, we are actually in uh, 80, 90% uh, through design, um, uh, uh, develop design, and so that we should be able to pull permits within the next six to eight weeks. And so, um, yeah, it's a little more than then uh, I never talk about competing sites, but I just know what we're doing and we're moving forward. Next slide. Um, this is kind of one of the entry places and around the exterior that we're designing these uh, metal plates that kind of create that uh, ceiling space, but it also creates different kinds of shadows and lights, light from the sun signing in. And so it's, when we talked about that global stage, the idea is basically as you enter different portions of the stadium, you feel like you're on stage. The natural sunlight reflecting off these metal plates uh, with the different types of uh, uh, porous uh, openings will kind of create these kind of light and shadow effects. So you actually feel like it's a stage entrance everywhere you go. Um, again, uh, the, the building is going to be 100 feet down into the 
uh, into the uh, uh, gr the ground there. Um, everybody asked about FAA after that kind of really fictitious report came down from the competing stadium downtown, and we meet well meet all the criteria over that. I mean, that's kind of one of the things you do first, right? Kind of figure out if you could build the building. Duh. Um, <laughs> but that was kind of just part of the you know the competition, if you will, so to speak. Um, Again, nesting into that, uh, the idea is also to create this shelter over the top with this uh, canopy over the top. This is so that we can get the other event. If you're going to do a Pac-10, it's got to have a canopy off the top. It can't just be an open-air stadium. So again, trying to get more than just uh, 10 days or 20 days of football. Next space. Um, these forms, we were looking earlier about the embedded design, like the Hollywood Bowl, sinking into the ground, uh, the roof structure. Looking at, uh, and this is so small here, the close coastline, the curves of the waves of the, uh, the coastline is all kind of reflected into this design. Uh, the layering effect of the freeways and this multi-layering effect is all kind of into the design of the actual building itself. Next slide. Um, iconic structures here in the city of Inglewood, the Forum, with its lateral um, uh, structure columns that kind of have been around that uh, uh, a Greco-Roman uh, structure to it. We're incorporating that also into the building so that they look like it was designed from error to error and it's just not something out of the blue to it. Uh, materiality, again, uh, on the top of this roof is this kind of ETF-E material, which is this clear, super strong plastic. You could park a car on top of it, it's, but it's uh, uh, a, a third of a percent light, uh, lighter than glass. And so that's all going to be incorporated into this building as well. Next page. Uh, passive cooling, again, the idea of sustainability is really important. Uh, it's almost like you don't have a choice anymore, right? Whether you believe in global warming or not, uh, the idea is basically to use the natural climate and environment here into cooling and um, heating the structure itself. Uh, so that's being designed into the way that the roof structure is being put together with vents and everything over the top of the building. Um, and again, using programming that to the different seasons here in Southern California, although they're not that varied, um, so that we can always be able to use the natural environment to be able to create climate control within the stadium itself. This is that ETF E uh, material. You'll be able to see straight to the sky. It'll be reflective. It can do different things over at the night period. Um, that metal portions that we we're talking about that's going to create that. Um, um, the structure that actually holds it together, but also create that different lighting effect will surround the actual uh, uh, structure itself. This actually is like building a bridge, by the way. It's a long span structure um, and similar to building a bridge uh, for the most part. So this is actually a little bit of an engineering feat that'll be done to actually create this roof structure. Next, these are just renderings of kind of what the building looks like to give you an idea of the profile of the building as it relates to the rest of the park structure. Again, different angles looking into the stadium. Uh, this is that connect, that low end that connects back into uh, the 10th and 11th Avenue areas. Next page. Um, again, these are kind of the, this, this is just to kind of show you that we're beyond just a few uh, pretty slides, that there actually is a lot of consideration to how this thing is actually going to work. Um, these are the structures going in. This is called, we have a series of canyons that are entry, entryways. And that landscaping that surrounds the stadium that we talked about earlier go all the way into the building itself. So that just feels like you're walking into uh, basically like a canyon coming into the actual structure itself. Again, that embedded out object notion. This is that public plaza we were talking about, whether that would be open to the public. Um, and again, if you've been up to the Getty Museum where you're kind of out and looking up over and that public space where you should just like, God, I'd like to just have lunch here. That's what this idea is actually. Um, we can go past this side, side here, next page. Um, again, this kind of gives you an idea of how it's embedded into uh, the ground itself that it sits low. So when you're entering in, you're going to be entering about mid-stadium level and then work walking down or walking up, depending on, on where your seats are. Um, this is just kind of our, this kind of shows you exactly what that stadium on the inside will look like embedded into the uh, the structure, but one of the most interesting things that uh, people kind of miss here, you've seen these uh, uh, blue ribbons. If you go to the Staples Center or 
you watch on TV AT and T or Dodger Stadium. They have those blue rubbers that kind of you know do advertising and do different things associated with it. That's a lot of these, but what's included in this is this ribbon hanging off the top of the um, the structure, which will be one of the largest LCD one of a kind televisions ever made. And the idea is that this stadium will be um, one of the you know most tech savvy like AT and T stadium is in which. You'll be able to pick up the game off your cell phone through the Wi-Fi system there, watch it, watch it on the field as well. And so that's the idea, kind of in terms of the design as well. Yeah, um, and this is just kind of another rendering, rendering there. I think this is it. Next page. Yeah, that's it. I just wanted to give you an idea of what's kind of going on. Um, and I'll be in the back if you want uh, to to answer some questions post post well, thing. Uh, Thank you again for coming out. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you at the next uh, uh, meeting. Thank you.